Dead Man Mode is a seasonal game mode that is basically like leagues but with PKing. I am not a PKer in the slightest, so I haven't really been interested in Dead Man Mode in the past, but this year they have some really cool cosmetics I want to get on my group Iron Man. It sounds pretty fun anyway, aside from the risk of getting PK'd and losing my items, so I want to try it out. If you're like me not too long ago and have no idea how Dead Man Mode actually works, here's a brief explanation. When you log in for the first time, you get one hour of protection so no one can PK you. After that, you can be killed anywhere in the world except for specific safe zones. Skilling and drop rates are all multiplied and go up when you enter higher combat brackets. There are sigils you can get from different activities that give you buffs, and breaches that happen four times a day at random locations where you can fight monsters for really good drops and lots of points. You can also get points from PVM, skilling, questing, and clue scrolls. And eventually use those points to buy the main game cosmetic rewards. I'm more of a skiller so I'm probably not gonna do a whole lot of PVM, it might depend on how much fun I'm having, and I don't want to do any PKing at all. I'm a complete noob and PKing just doesn't interest me. Sorry if that's lame to watch, but hopefully some of you guys are interested because you want to see someone like you who also doesn't PK. I'll probably get killed a lot, which sucks because when you die, the PKer gets a key to have access to your 10 most valuable items in your bank, but you can put your really valuable items in a deposit box that's safe from PKers. As for my personal plans, I really don't need a ton of points. There's only a few cosmetic rewards I want, and I'd be fine not getting all of them. As of recording this at least, I have no idea how much each of the rewards cost, but they shouldn't be too hard to get, I think. I don't really have any specific goals otherwise, and I'm probably mostly gonna play like an Iron Man because I find that easier. This intro is pre-recorded Recorded, so I'll see you tomorrow, or two seconds for you, when Dead Man Mode Armageddon starts. Okay, it's the next day and Dead Man Mode is here. I've been stalling because you only get that like one hour of protection at the beginning. So I just want to like make sure that I'm going to use my time wisely and not be like sitting around trying to decide what to do. So Mudkip linked me this like starter guide for Dead Man Mode that he's using. And I guess I'm going to use it too because it seems pretty good. It's just like starting in the gnome stronghold and then doing a few quests basically so i think i'm just gonna like follow that at least partially i think this guide gets you to like over 50 combat and i want to stay under 50 combat so that i'm in the like lowest bracket at least at the start while i'm kind of just skilling and stuff because that's like the safest combat bracket or at least that's what I've been told. I'm logging in now. Okay, got my character made. This is very important. And I think I can just skip through here. And I want to go to Gnome Stronghold. Oh, I can't open my starter kit. I don't really know what I need to have banked, but whatever. Oh yeah, I get the starter staff. And is this the, the like agility thing? It's funny because I was actually wanting that. <laughs> I want to train agility early on. Oh, that's nice. And I get to also choose a free combat sigil. And I'm gonna go with the melee one. You can like change these later on when you get more sigils if you like buy them on the GE or if you just get them from playing the game. But I'm gonna go with the melee one because that's I think more important early on, especially for like Slayer and stuff and especially for like not having good gear because like you'll die a lot and I want to stay low combat at least at the start so I'm gonna go with this one and it basically just makes melee better <laughs> you like have these in your inventory well they're like not lost on death so that's good anyway I'm gonna follow this guide now and I'm gonna do some agility because that's what the guide says to do because you need 25 agility oh hey there's frit kip hi we're doing agility together. I'm sure he's way above 25 agility by now, but I'm gonna need 25 so that I can do a uh, tree gnome village or grand tree. I don't remember which one it is, but I'm doing both of those and also waterfall quest. And all of that shouldn't get me above 50 combat, so I'll be able to stay in this world. Oh, I got my first mark of grace. I forgot you can get marks of grace from this now. And I got my 10k GP. Oh, that's 
good. I love this sigil. So anyway, there's like combat brackets and as you can see there's like 51 to 70 which I can't enter and those are like more dangerous than the 3 to 50 worlds. So I'm currently in this world. Oh yeah, I'm also gaining a lot of points from getting all these levels. Um, I talked to him, but it's not showing the quest as yellow. Hopefully I'm on the next step. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I just realized I didn't start the quest because I need to empty inventory slots. <laughs> well, that sucks. I'll go back later. Okay, now I'm currently teleporting to Lumbridge. Oh wait, I'm dumb. I can just bank my sigils. I don't know why I thought I couldn't. <laughs> and like, I still have them on. They're just not like physically on me. I'm just starting X marks the spot while I'm in the area. Oh, that's interesting. It tells you when you enter multi. Quest complete. Oh, I'm so mad. I was supposed to use that fairy ring, but I forgot to claim a dream and stuff. I have to run back. I'm wasting so much time. <laughs> oh, it's the combat tutors that give you a dream and stuff. Okay, got it. Monk's friend complete. 34 wood cutting nice. I am extremely grateful for the quest helper plugin right now. This is so nice not having to like navigate this on my own and waste a bunch of time. Also having unlimited run energy is definitely really nice. No, I died doing the quest. That's so embarrassing. I can have this guy teleport me so I think Artie is closest. It's fine. It's totally fine. I have nine minutes left. Oh my god. I just hope I don't get like PK'd a lot automatically. <laughs> Hopefully a lot of people are just trying to like get set up at the start and not like gonna kill me. <laughs> oh no, there's wolves. I gotta be careful here. No, my PvP protection ran out <laughs> and I haven't finished my stuff. Uh, this guy despawned when I was first killing him. I'm not off to a great start right now. <laughs> hopefully no one kills me while I'm questing. And hopefully this guy won't despawn before I can kill him. Ah, <sighs> finally. Tree Gnome Village complete. Oh wow, that's a lot of levels. I'm still 19 combat. <laughs> Someone's already attacking me? What the hell? <laughs> You're not gonna get anything from me, why? Oh, this doesn't work as a teleport. That sure killed me, I guess. Okay, Grand Tree complete. It's a lot of levels, but I'm still only 26 combat. Since I lost my money, I'm just gonna do agility until I get a Mark of Grace so I can buy back the runes that I need for Waterfall Quest. Actually, I just realized I can do the Varrock course and I was gonna go there anyway to get runes, so I'm gonna travel to the GE and all of this is a safe zone, like the entirety of Varrock, including the GE. So I'm gonna run to the Varrock agility course. Sorry if you can hear it's under in the background. It's the rainy season here in the desert where it's like actually raining a little bit. I think it's nice and cozy though. But anyway, I'm gonna do some Varrock agility just until I get some GP and then run to the rune shop here to get my runes for a waterfall quest. Oh, that took me 17 laps, but there's my mark of grace and 10k GP. Waterfall quest complete. 43 combat, okay. And that's all of like the first little part of this guide I was following so it's where I'm gonna stop following the guide. Okay this might be a bad idea but I kind of want to try to get 43 prayer. Nope, I got killed. Okay, I'm not gonna try that, I guess. <laughs> it was worth a shot, though. I just wanted to see if I could do Chaos Altar stuff while I have nothing to lose, but I think what I probably will do is just, like, go to Blue Dragons in the Isle of Souls or something and get bones that way, and then when I'm ready to move up a bracket, I can get that one hour of protection when I enter the new world, and then I can use that to get 43 prayer at the chaos altar because I'm worried that it's gonna be like a pretty packed hot spot like the entire time like no matter how long I wait so I think my goal right now is just to do a bunch of questing that requires like running around in dangerous areas while I don't really have anything to lose and I also want to get my stats up so that I can easily like gear myself up whenever I die. Okay, I just made a long list of quests to do so I'm just gonna kind of do a little quest montage and hopefully I don't get PK'd a lot. Firstly, I just wanted to reclaim this lamp because I lost it. I think I'm gonna put it on prayer. Got me to 16 prayer and I'm still well under 50 combat so that's good. 
Shapeshare complete. That got me 13 crafting. I'm just gonna quickly do Cook's assistant because I'm tired of having to run upstairs to bank. So I'm gonna do that and then start RFD. I figured while I'm doing this stuff, I would just do the gnome cocktail thing. So I got 24 cooking from that. <laughs> no, I lost my green mint ale. That's so annoying. <laughs> I did get this sigil though. I didn't know that I could get sigils from opening starter packs again. All non-combat skills are permanently boosted by five. That's cool. Certainly better than nothing, so I'm gonna go attune it. First part of RFD done. Do I have the bank unlocked? No. Okay, I think I have to do this whole cutscene thing first. Okay, I do have access to the bank now, but I just realized that's not guarded down there, so maybe I won't use that bank. That was kind of pointless. <laughs> At least I got a bit of XP out of that. Missalin mystery done. Just did a bit of agility so I can get some GP. I ended with 55 agility and with that sigil I have 60 now basically so I can use this year's course whenever I feel like doing that. Daddy's home complete and that got me to 26 construction. I wonder if I can bake this crate. Oh, I can. Because that's like safe actually. Because <laughs> it's not tradable, it won't be stolen from the PKers. Oh wow, the breaches just spawned. That's so cool. I don't know if I want to go to them because I don't have good gear. And it's probably good to like do other stuff while breaches are going on because all the PKers are probably there. So they're not going to be after me. I was wood cutting and fire making just to get 30 fire making for a sea slug quest and I just kept wood cutting for a bit because I was eating dinner and I wanted to AFK. I was just wood cutting that oak tree over there because it's not in a safe zone so you can get sigils from it and I did get one. I got the sigil of resilience. Oh wow that's neat. Your hit points restore 15 times faster than normal. That's really cool actually. I don't know if I want to bother using it right now but I'll definitely save it. I think that's gonna be the end of this video. I'm at over 7k points right now. It's like kind of towards the end of day one. There's definitely still more time in the day, but I want to spend that time editing instead of like actually playing. My stats are nothing amazing, but I think it's a pretty good start. I got a lot of quests done, a lot of like low level quests, and I feel like for a skiller mainly, it's a decent start to dead man mode. I think for now I'm probably just gonna do stuff in safe zones because I'm tired of getting PK'd. I mean there's a lot less people on now and there was one time where I kind of almost got PK'd but I managed to run back into a safe zone just in time. So like it's not too bad I think but I'm just tired of getting PK'd and having to like get back my questing supplies. It's like I don't I don't have anything that's really valuable besides like GP because I know that there's like swapping and dead man mode GP is worth a lot of GP in the main game and that's probably what a lot of PKers are after. But like besides that I just have like quest supplies and it's just really inconvenient when I die because I have to keep getting back the quest supplies. <laughs> So I might just wait a little bit to continue doing quests and stuff, but I am glad that I got a lot of stuff out of the way early on, like when I didn't have anything to lose and I just wanted to get like levels and points from doing the quests. I will say it is kind of fun though. It's not as fun as leagues for me personally, but I think if you were thinking about trying it out, then you probably should just be prepared to die a lot and like have a plan for if you die. I think that's kind of the most important thing. Like it is good to learn how to escape PKers and this could be like practice for that for like in the main game in the wilderness but you should definitely still prepare to die a lot. So I think my next goals will probably be like getting diary stuff that you can't lose like getting the arty cloak and I think you can claim it back 
pack from Purdue and Lumbridge if you lose one, but you can also like get a bunch of them and just have them in your bank. So that's like really good to have if you die because it's like a nice teleport and it's kind of gear for like low level gear. And of course getting like thieving up and having the agility sigil is really nice to get GP back when you die. If you have GP in your bank, you don't lose all of it when you're PK'd, you lose 80% of it, but like that could be a lot. And sometimes I've had my whole cash stack on me and I got PK'd, so I lost all of it. And then I think crafting and fletching are really good to have like higher up, so you can like craft bows and craft dragon hide armor, which is especially really important with PKers because a lot of them use magic or use ranged. So ranged armor is pretty decent against both of those. And also another thing that I think I've learned today is that Port Sarim and like Remington is a hot spot. <laughs> so like this area, I've gotten PK'd like two or three times here <laughs> specifically. I mean, I guess there is a lot of quests that are in this area and then it's like kind of far from safe zones because there's not a safe zone in Draenor, but there is one in Falador, but but you probably can't run there in time if you're like in this area. So I guess one other piece of advice I have is try to avoid this area while Dead Man is like really populated. Maybe like wait until it dies down a little bit before you do activities there. I don't know if you can escape by using like a charter ship, like if that counts as a teleport, but I know you can like get on the boat and that should be fine. That like kind of works like a ladder. I don't know if that would fool the PKers. I don't know how the like ladder thing works in dead man mode because you have that delay before you're able to escape. But yeah, this is like a decent amount of points. I saw on, I think it was a Reddit post from a Jmod doing like a Q&A and they said that all of the dead man cosmetics from the shop should be like in total 30k points, like if you buy everything. So even in just like, just less than one day of playing, I've gotten kind of almost 8k points. I'm not gonna do math, but that's like almost a third of the way there. So I'd probably only need to play for like four days in total to afford everything in the shop if I wanted to. But yeah, I guess for now I'm kind of just gonna play it safe because you get points just from like skilling and doing diary tasks and completing diaries. You don't have to quest, you don't have to PVM or anything like that. I also haven't even tried out the breaches yet, but I know those are pretty good points. So I feel like even if you're a complete noob skiller, it should be doable to get the cosmetics that you want. So I hope this inspires you and maybe it's entertaining to watch someone be bad at dead man mode. Anyway though, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to claim your daily starter kits because you can get a sigil from them. And it's also probably just nice to have the extra food. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye friends.